Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. It's going to take it so long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're going to take it so long. It might not be everywhere. It won't be in my neighborhood because nothing's going on. But in these neighborhoods where there's no popo, eventually the people will form the popo. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Up. And that's what's so sad about, you know, the inner cities and the black community specifically and why I love what Maj is doing and what mm. you're doing is taking the Second Amendment back to them. Because how long have they been uh, unable to defend themselves? And you, that's where you see Chicago uh, killings every day. Can you imagine just arming and educating the inner city? And I'm just like, I would love to sit back and watch how that plays out because I'm pretty sure they clean it up real quick. Yeah themselves i think i think trying to work on that is a lot better i'm not saying that we have to try to work and do all these things forever because i obviously there's a line there's a point that we get to when we have to fight for something but i think it's better most of us most human beings kind of think along the lines of what we're saying here regardless of what political side they are on things it's just a lot of things that they're not seeing and and, and you have to try to uh to work on that because once we get into something here there's no guarantee of what's gonna what's gonna come out of that so i think the better situation is to try to talk to people open their eyes get them to access understand exactly what they're dealing with you know um uh, listen, I, when I have conversations with people, I hear them saying, oh, I don't care about, you know, I'm happy that they're pulling down. I, I had that conversation today where someone was <laughs> telling me that they're happy that they're taking down all the statues and stuff like that. And I was like, listen, Why? you have to be careful about symbolism, because if someone gives you a symbol of them doing something and they're like, OK, go out here and work all your frustrations out and tear down these statues or uh, burn this flag or get rid of that thing and you'll feel better. But they don't actually do anything to make the situation better. When you tear all of that down and you still wind up in the same problem that made you mad. Now, what are you going to do? There's no solution in that, and that's yeah. kind of uh, my issue with what's going on. I think that it's it is going towards communism, Marxism, uh, and using the vehicle of socialism, and it is scary seeing how many people. I mean, Bernie Bernie should have won, which is is ironic and, and very scary at the same time. Is well, not the election. He he would have been the Democratic candidate. He wouldn't he have won. Would the election. Have, he would have been the Democratic candidate, and uh, they. Are stole you talking that. about this time around or last time last around? Time. Both. Time. Mm-hmm. Oh, there, absolutely, he was, was absolutely stolen from him from 2016, mm-hmm. uh, and, but, and he got even more more popularity coming this time. Those people embrace they're embracing socialism, and what they don't know is that leads to communism. And I think that's what you are seeing with these anarchists coming in and and riding the coattails of the BLM. I think that uh, the BLM has been hijacked. If they had a, they're part you know, of it too. It's not they're not separate. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. All part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a they're police all they're all get they're all getting paid. So, mm-hmm. as a police officer, I can't support anybody who wants to kill anybody, uh, let alone police officers that are there to um, protect, make sense of it. Protect, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Walter, you were saying that some of your your uh, acquaintances were happy that they were tearing down statues. Well, now uh, Sean King, you know, okay. has been uh, saying, "Oh, well, now we need to cancel uh, Jesus." Jeez statues and, and, and symbols in churches because he's white I'm and not, they need to tear that down so then no that was me so saying that i don't think that was walter that was me saying that people oh, were yeah, telling yeah, me yeah, that yeah. i'm not i'm not a real religious person yeah but if they start attacking churches i'll they can they they're gonna they're gonna meet some people that's definitely mm-hmm. coming for sure and if they start you know attacking churches to do whatever mm-hmm. you know that's when you have to stand up and say you know what come bring it on mm-hmm. <laughs> mano y mano because you can't let this go on. This this is this Sean White guy, whatever his name is, the guy that plays black that is white. Um, I think you're talking about Sean King, the guy who founded yeah, uh, yeah, Black yeah, Lives yeah. Matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or one that... of the founding. Who knows? We don't even really know. Right. It's always right. a weird thing when the people be. You should always be in doubt of an organization where the people who started it are kind of hiding, but they're still alive. I understand if they're not alive and there's other people running it, but whoever's started it should be out front, and definitely whoever's running it 
should be out front so we could all figure out who they are. Uh, that's how the communists, so they're always out front. And then when they, mm -hmm. they come to Big Popo or the big mm -hmm. man, they go back in the office and they have their henchmen do the, do the mm -hmm. dirty work. Yeah. You know? Hey. But most people, I'm going to tell you guys, most people don't, including a lot of black people out there, you might not believe it, a lot of people who are looking at this are asking, why is this happening? Why are we tearing everything down? Why I don't are we destroying it. these things? What is that doing? What what to what point are we doing that? My my question is how who how, who makes that decision? What when, when a like a city actually re decides to remove uh, something's being removed from the archives, right? Mm -hmm. Some somebody in the government is making the decision to do that, and I don't remember anybody saying you know how to, taking a poll to see uh, if, if 90% of Americans want the statue there, uh, and it's just, everything is crashing so fast. It, yeah. it is yeah. about dividing us. It's I've... about dividing us on so many different levels. It's the devil having his day on, on this earth. And, um, it, it's, I keep saying united we stand and divided we fall. Uh, and I just don't see where the glue that held us together uh, which is the flag and uh, our values. I feel like, uh, church? you know, past 20 here, years, of church, uh, those, those values, the glue has uh, dissipated and we don't have anything to hold us together anymore. So I don't know. I don't see how this comes out. Um, I'm very kind of concerned uh, yes. for our future, honestly. I think the big thing that was holding everyone together with, were the jobs. Now, obviously, people who don't have jobs didn't have jobs and don't have jobs right now. But when we got into a position where we shut down people from their everyday work of what they were doing, when we said, hey, we've got this flu virus that's a little extra virulent this year, and we're going to shut everything down, I think, you know, I, I, I think that we're, it's almost like we were just setting it up. It's almost too perfect you know, for it to be a coincidence that we were setting all this up to happen. But I, I still really believe that most of the people, regardless of what their race and all that kind of stuff is, they're not out there. Wait, look at who's tearing down the statues. Who do you actually see tearing down statues? A lot of who's dumb white people. I don't see them going down. A lot of dumb white people. The media never shows it. Yeah, well, you have to, you have to ask yourself, well, look, when I was having this conversation today, I, um, I, I, my, my friend that was talking that stuff to me, I told him, you know what, go, let's go pull up what Malcolm X said about Democrats and Republicans, and we did that. And even he said that, look, I, he said he didn't like either one of the parties, but the ones he liked the most, or disliked the most, were the Democratic Party, because they played this game with people of color. They played this game. Of, of symbols like hey we're here for you we're on your side and we'll do this for you and we'll do that for you and they never actually did anything they almost kind of felt like they had ownership of them or treated them like pets and we'll just give you this and we'll give you that but we're not really going to do anything and part of that is like how we saw these guys uh in congress come out in kente cloth and do all that my friend didn't even believe it we know about it because we pay attention to the news guess what i did i made him go pull up the news and look at it OK, I made him go through all these things because most people out there today are just trying to actually not see everything that's happening. And sometimes you have to make them look at things and then they're like, oh, wow, yeah, this we're just getting played. There's just people feeling like we're just their pets and they'll give us the symbol. Oh, we tore all these things down. We took this down. We took that down. We changed the name of this. We changed the name of that. No more this anymore. But when you but whatever problem you still have every day, if someone's actually uh, treating you with some kind of prejudice or doing something to you because of your the skin, your skin color, they're still going to be doing it. Yeah. But people are going to go, oh, we already solved that, dude. We tore the statues down. What else do you want? Right. You know, that's 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 the kind of problem that we have. Once we go to the situation of, OK, that's it. You know, um, everyone's going to we're just going to take this there and everyone's going to start fighting. I'm not saying I don't want to do that. But once we go there, that's not like that's just like pulling a trigger. When you once you pull that trigger, you cannot recover that round that comes flying out of the barrel. Yeah. Just we just you know, all need to bear that in mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Diana. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to have to take off pretty quick. But one thing I wanted to uh, talk about was this corporate activism. I think it's probably the biggest threat to our community oh, no. and our, our uh, livelihood. And nobody talks about it. And mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, um, I only learned about it last fall. Mm -hmm. 
after I testified, I went to a, a New York Times event. They had invited um, they had invited me to speak basically on behalf of the Second Amendment with a bunch of CEOs from Levi's, from Royal Caribbean, from um, all these big. And then there were the anti activists. There was a uh, mm. Parkland Fathers, and of course, um, uh, other anti type people. Mm. In the room. And their question to us was. You know, should corporate America take on activism when it comes to guns? And I'm telling you that what I heard in there was terrifying because they were of the opinion that it didn't matter how much money it cost them. It didn't matter how that they felt like they were on the tip of the spear when it comes to social justice and, and gun control and gun violence, that they were usurping, they're willing to usurp the Constitution and the legislation, the legislators, in order to, to it's almost like, um, oh, what's the, the Russian, you, uh, starts with an E or a U or control, you know, yeah. it's just, uh, it's super, super scary. And, and they're talking about banking or talking about, and you see it with YouTube, you mentioned it with YouTube earlier, that they're censoring us to the point where they control uh, what we're doing and they, you know, shadow ban us and things like that. So mm -hmm. it's, and how they do it is like, let's say I'm a shareholder with, um, let's say Levi's, I'm a shareholder with Levi's and I go to their board meeting and I say, I don't like that you are, you have an affiliate program with the NRA. And if you don't se separate that relationship with them, I'm going to turn on my social justice warriors on your brand. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a brand, what would you do? Uh, well, it, it, most of them it, are going to bow to that pressure. Well, if you had a set of, if the, if, if the people in charge had a set, they, look, these people that threaten these bands and all this stuff, they're like this, they're like this. In in the world, in the, in the as far as buying things, they're like this. They're well, not, they're, it's like, it's like, so do it. Well, What's going to happen? What's going to do? Mm -hmm. Turn on your social justice warriors. What's going to happen? Well, look at it, look around. I most mean, companies nobody, fold. That's what happens. But, what, yeah. but, but what's, I mean, in a week, the, the news cycles changed completely and nobody. Yeah, I'm not saying I agree with it, but the proof NASCAR, is in the pudding. <laughs> NASCAR went anti gun. I mean, yeah, I mean, and look what it's going to do to them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's like football. They don't care. And they lost some viewership, but they continue mm -hmm. to go on. And we don't yeah. ever recover that ground. We, mm -hmm. we just lose ground and yeah. we lose ground. And our, our community keeps di dissipating and dissipating. And it gets whittled away until we're we're going to be the minority. Yeah. And also, people become more and more scared of, of talking about these things because I've I've been hearing people losing their job over their beliefs, and that's not right. Yeah. Right. You know, the First Amendment doesn't protect oh, us. well, you outside could, you of you know, you can't government. throw you can't throw somebody out because they're gay. You can't throw them out because they're black or. But or you can do whatever. whatever you want to do to them because but, they're a gun person, though. But if I say or I don't be, like you, know. you because you're so and so, you can fire me. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yes. Or There's you can try. Point. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing I would say about that. Just to answer your question, I know you don't have a lot of time here. Um, I would say to those corporations, if they really, if they're truly, they're in business to make money. The end result of what they're doing is no money. Not because people won't buy their thing, because if we're all enveloped in a modern civil war, no one's buying anything. Let me tell you what's really going to happen. Those people that are holding them hostage because of that, then they'll come after their money mm -hmm. and say, you have to give us money because you're so rich. And you. And I didn't get in business to be a social welfare system. Because, mm -hmm. And I don't believe anybody should be forced into that. If you want to make a hundred billion dollars and sit on it on your bed and bury it in your bed and, and, and make a mountain, that's your world. If you want to give it away, that's your world too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nobody should be held hostage to I give think, away their money. I think companies are very scared of being canceled. We live like we talked about earlier. We live in cancel culture, and people mm -hmm. think that Twitter is reality, and it's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and well, that's the scary part. These people, there's so many people that are just so uneducated. Mm -hmm. They and don't know. They the light of the forest fire starts. Yeah. yeah. I think ultimately, maybe this is what they want. Maybe they want to see like how much conviction we have for it. I know I'm not willing to live in America with any part of the Constitution removed. The Constitution as it stands now, I'm not willing to just stand by and live here as it gets dismantled. And if you start dismantling it by the Second Amendment, 
that that's a massive sign. And that's a massive says, sign of where you're going. First thing to go is they go after guns. Yeah. That's the very first yeah. thing. But no one but, agrees with that. If you look at Dave Chappelle, if you look at a lot of folks out there, they don't believe that. There's a person who you think probably he's on the opposite side of what we believe. And in certain instances, I'm sure he, he is. But when it comes to that, he's like, hey, when that goes away, then then who knows where this is going? This is the funny thing about it. You might think, oh, if I just take all of these things away, that it benefits it benefits my agenda. If, let's say if you're a Democrat or a liberal or something like that, it benefits my agenda. No, when you change the rules, you don't know who's going to be in charge and who they're going to use that against. Everything is cyclic, my friend. Yeah. So anyway, Everything listen. Everything is cyclic. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to keep Diana here longer. I know she looks like she's having fun. Actually, with I am having fun, and I yeah. hate to depart you, but yeah. hey, another thing before I leave you, um, the Ambassador Academy is something mm -hmm. that I started uh, last year. We just got done with our uh, the shirt I'm wearing, okay. uh, and basically, it's it it's everything that a sponsored shooter or a brand ambassador needs because mm -hmm. I'm a one man show. This specifically talks about shooting so we have a shooting element but it doesn't have to be but we need to know how to film and edit we need to know how to uh, use social media and analytics and strategy uh, we need to know how to we need to have a portfolio so we have professional photographers uh, and we also have a huge element of being on camera being in front of an interviewer or a podcast or and talking about the Second Amendment. So if anybody is interested in that, uh, please give the Ambassador Academy training. Ambassador Academy was already taken, so I had to put training in there too. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're on social media, and we're also at pro3gunner.com. Uh, P-R-O, the number three, gunner.com, ambassador. And then uh, the DC Project, obviously, dcproject.info. I want to give a little shout out to that. And if anybody wants to join or support, whatever, uh, we would love to have it. Women for Gun Rights. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Diane Moeller. I appreciate you coming through. We'll try to share uh, Joanna's info with you. We're not going to give you Walter's info at all. I'm sure. Not. Walter, I'm just kidding. Take Walter's info. My, my wife is the CEO of our company. So. <laughs> no, I am just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it was great. It was great having you on. Hopefully, I know you've got some family uh, things going on right now that you have to deal with. So. Uh, hopefully, once you've got all those things sorted out and you're not so busy, we can get you to come back on here with the people because we really appreciate everything that you're doing and we want to be able to at least play our part in helping you out in, uh, on your mission. I would love to. Next time I'm in Orlando, I want you guys to come meet up with us. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll try, we'll try to make that happen. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> We're out. You're out. We're still here. The, the uh, myself, Joanna, and Walter, and myself, we're going to still be here continuing, continuing this conversation. Oh, I like, I like. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.